Hello again. Welcome everyone to Dr. Jasper Soft Spring Edition. It is April 8th, 2021, our first session in the springtime and uh, glad to see some warmer weather, at least here where I am in uh, beautiful Colorado, uh, USA. Uh, so again, my name is Mike Belkowitz. For those that I haven't met before, uh, thanks again for joining uh, everyone. we got another wonderful yet very specific session uh, in store for you today. Um, today we are going to be talking uh, with a colleague of mine, Batter Dreyfi, Dreyfi, sorry, Batter, and we, uh, we are going to be talking about clustering your on-premise Jasper Reports server. Uh, let me just share this screen real quick. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> And uh, um, I just wanted to make a quick plug before we jump into that with our next session. Uh, so May 13th, again, second Thursday of every month, we're going to be doing a cores specific session. So anybody who's had issues with cores, which is the cross origin resource sharing, uh, the browser type issues that we sometimes see uh, with Jasper Report Server, you'll be, you'll be wanting to tune in, sign up and tune in for that session in May. Uh, that will be actually uh, hosted by uh, Batter and uh, Kamal, who is on the call as well. And, um, and yeah, so please uh, look for that uh, link as soon as uh, this session is over. Sometime later today, that link will be there, and you should get an email hopefully um, in the next couple of weeks to sign up for that session. So uh, without, uh, oh, and um, if uh, the housekeeping stuff, sorry, if you have questions, please use that Q&A button that's down at the bottom of your screen. Uh, type in those questions there. If uh, I'll be monitoring that during Batter's presentation, if there's something I can answer during the presentation, I will do that uh, on the Q&A section. Otherwise, we will save all the, Q the questions for the end and, uh, and present those to Batter. So um, please, please, please uh, use that Q&A section there. It's much easier for us to track them if you use that. Do not use the chat, the chat window there. It doesn't work quite as well uh, for us to track the questions. So I think that's about it. Uh, Batter, are you with us? Yes, I'm right here, Mike. Thank you. Awesome. All right, I will stop sharing my screen, Batter, and give you control. So if you want to go ahead and begin sharing, I'll take. I'll leave it up to you. Take it away. Thanks, Mike. Sure. Hi, guys. Happy to be here with you on this uh, April session of Dr. Jasper. Uh, let me share my screen. Here we go. So the agenda for uh, for today will be we're gonna talk about uh, we're gonna do an overview <clears throat> of uh, Jasper Report Server clustering and talk about uh, the three pillars of Jasper Report Server cluster. What to expect? Uh, we're gonna take a look of the architecture, and uh, we're gonna also talk about the customizations to implement inside the Jasper Report server that will allow you to have uh, a, an on-premise on, on -premise cluster. And at the end, we're gonna do all of, uh, all of what we're gonna talk about in demonstration and we're gonna see how all this played out. All right, let's start it. Okay, guys, so uh, this presentation will show you a step-by-step -step guide to implement the Jasper Report server cluster and it's intended to help you <clears throat> implementing the same mechanism on your own environment and also what to expect in terms of failover, load balancing and a sticky session. We're gonna talk uh, details about that in a minute. So, okay. So the three pillars, actually the Jasper report server has those two main components here. Those are mandatory to have in order to have a Jasper report server cluster. The third one is optional. It's something that you can have a partial session replication, but it's not mandatory. So the first thing to do uh, in order for Jasper report server to operate uh, across multiple instances, you need to configure your load balancer with a sticky session mechanism. As you know, Jasper report server is a stateful application and uh, your, so your, your session, user session, they will need to stick on one node. Once they reached uh, uh, a node, this node will need to stay, all the further requests will need to stay there in order to, uh, in order to save the user's work and uh, workflow and all the uh, user's activities on that node. 
So first thing to do is configure your load balancer with the sticker session. Second thing is uh, you will need to set up a GMS provider uh, server, preferably an active MQ, which is uh, open source and free to use. And uh, it, has, it has an Apache, it's from Apache and has an Apache license. And uh, this active MQ uh, or any other GMS provider will actually help you to manage the cache repository, cache uh, repository in Jasper report server that actually we use EA cache uh, behind the scenes to uh, cache the request to the Jasper report, just Jasper repository database. So once you have implemented those two components, you are actually ready to go uh, to have multiple instances running uh, in your environment of Jasper server. And uh, you can go uh, more than this and up, um, implement a partial session replication in your application server, the Tomcat, GBoss, or any other application server. This partial session replication will be, <clears throat> as the name is a partial, so you can't uh, fully replicate the whole session inside the, the instances because uh, the session will, it has a lot of information about uh, the user. So this will impair actually your environment and you will have, we require more memory and uh, will may slow down your, your server. So uh, Jasper server will only allow you to do partial session replication, which means uh, your users, uh, the data of your users will be uh, saved. Only the data of report, browsing the repository, seeing folders, uh, moving, copying uh, resources inside Jasper server, this data will be replicated. But once you are in an ad hoc uh, designer designing your reports or running your reports uh, or scheduling your reports, those actually are not cannot be replicated. Uh, okay, so going ahead of what to expect. Uh, so just for report server cluster will allow you to increase your resources availability. Uh, for example, if one instance fails, so uh, users, your users will keep working on the other running servers uh, because they, uh, the load balancer will redirect them automatically to the what, at your other running instance, so they will keep working there. If if you have the session replication, partial session replication in place, of this, if you have the application server partial session replication in place your user will actually will not be invited to log in again. So they will just keep working because the session is uh, both nodes uh, are aware of, uh, of, of your user sessions. So it will, it will just, uh, your users will just keep working without noticing that there was, uh, that there was a server, uh, server failing. Uh, if you don't have the applications partial session or application server partial session, replication and then your user will be invited to log in again so if the server fails they will be redirected to the other instances but in the login page so they will need to uh, <clears throat> to connect with their use their login username and password you're gonna have resource flexibility so this will allow you to add more instances when the load is high so for example at the end of the month i don't know maybe the hr mm -hmm. has a lot of uh, reports to schedule at that time mm -hmm. So you can actually just uh, have one server and up and running just be specific for that week when the load is high. And once this week is done, and then you can go back to your, uh, to your previous setup. So that's something nice to have. Uh, we'll also increase the performance because well, now we have multiple servers to handle traffic. And you can also do some parallel running scheduled jobs. So you can actually have one server that will only be responsible to schedule your report. This way you will, uh, you will make, you, 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 will not have, you will not impair the other users that just browsing the reports or running the reports or designing the reports. They will be uh, on another server uh, and the report scheduled in a whole another server. So this will very there will be a very good idea to increase performance of your Jasper server. Uh, okay, so going through the architecture. So here you have our HTTP request. That, <clears throat> sorry, well, first we're gonna go. They will go through the load balancer. That it should be configured with a sticky session. So once uh, your users hit Jasper server, they will load balancer redirect them to one node. 
and uh, the other users in the other node. That will depend on how you're gonna do the uh, uh, the algorithm that you're gonna apply on the load balancer, which is the round robin or something else. So that has nothing. There's no effect on the uh, on, on the load balancer. The only thing that you need to to make sure of is once the user reached the node all its further requests on that session that has been created in that server will stay on that same node. This thanks to sticky session. Uh, so one, here, for example, we have two nodes of Tomcat. So once your users will uh, start working on Jasper server, uh, they will start creating folders, uh, generating reports, stuff. So all those, uh, all this work will go to uh, be saved on your PostgreSQL SQL database or uh, any other Jasper Server repository database through DA cache. Uh, so DA cache in inside the node one and node two, for example, we have user A and user B. <clears throat> The active MQ that you're going to set up that you will do the cache replication will allow your user A that will create a folder here to be uh, shown to the user B that's going to work to the other instance uh, through the active MQ that will synchronize the cache between those uh, nodes here. Uh, so as you see here, the database cache will be synchronized across nodes using active MQ or any other GMS provider, by the way. Uh, and this part here, the session replication, this is the optional thing. So session replication mostly you're gonna be configured inside Tomcat. A lot of the, the most of the work will be on the Tomcat. Uh, so the Tomcat will actually start uh, starts broadcasting. They will be using UDP broadcasting, broadcast its IP uh, across the different nodes. So they will form a cluster here. So once this is done, uh, every every Tomcat instance that you're going you're going to that you're going to uh, you're going to start, it will be discovered and integrate in this cluster. And so we'll have uh, and once the user starts working on one instance, so Tomcat will be responsible to share its session across all those nodes in that uh, in that cluster. We're gonna see all that in action during, in, in, in the demonstration. So this will be uh, used by Tomcat using uh, multicasting. Uh, so when every Tomcat node starts up, it will broadcast its address to the different nodes available and create cluster with shared session. So this is basically the architecture of having uh, just multiple instances of Jasper server working together in uh, uh, using the cache replication and uh, load balancer stick session and optionally the session uh, partial session replication. Okay. Uh, yeah. So in terms of customization that you will need to to to, to change in your Jasper server. You have first the the cache replication using active MQ. So there's some configuration files uh, in Jasper server you need to update. Uh, of course, you need to set up your GMS server, and uh, <clears throat> you need to for the partial session replication on Tomcat. Uh, there is some changes on the Tomcat side and also on the Jasper server side. Adding Tomcat clustering log. This is something really nice to have. Uh, you just configure Tomcat to show some logs about clustering. So you can see uh, the activities once Tomcat is started and started sharing its session and so on. So this is something nice to have. And also uh, I'm going to show you a sample of the Apache load balancer. I'm, in this presentation, we're gonna use the Apache load balancer. So we're gonna I'm gonna provide you with a sample of uh, how to implement a sticky session uh, in, uh, in in Apache Load Balancer. Uh, yeah. So <clears throat> let's uh, yeah. So let's get to it. Uh, going to show you the different uh, customizations first. Uh, all right. So. Here, as you see, we have the Apache load balancer. So in the httpg.conf, show this in here. So at the end of my configuration files, I've added this virtual host. 
virtual host AT. So this virtual host is gonna do is uh, I'm setting up on the AT port uh, and I'm adding this proxy balancer, which is gonna have two members. So my members will be localhost 8080, Jasper Server Pro 7.5. By the way, this demonstration will be done doing just for Jasper Server 7.5. And uh, the other member will be 8088, Jasper Server Pro 7.5. I'm gonna have this proxy pass to forward everything that came from that that want to reach Jasper Pro 7.5 to go to the balancer cluster using a sticky session based on G session ID that uh, my GRS will, will will create, my Jasper report server will create. So this part here is the sample configuration for Apache load balancer. So you can have your own, this is just for demonstration purposes. You can add more, you can specify your algorithms. You can, you can change a lot of things in here. This is just basic, basically just to have the sticky session and to have the two balance members in our uh, Apache load balancer. So this part is for Apache. If for Jasper server ca cache replication in the this uh, this this meta inf and web inf, this route will it presents actually just to show you. Now I get confused. So here we have, uh, for example, I'm using Apache Tomcat, all right? So I have my web apps and I have my Jasper Server Pro. So this is the root folder, okay, for my Jasper Server Pro. So the customization here uh, presents uh, the root folder of Jasper Server Pro when you go web apps in Jasper Server. So in MetaEnf, I have my context.xml that I need to change to, to do here into comment this line manager part name. So this will enable session persistence across Tomcat restart. This is also optional only if you want to have uh, partial session replication. In the WebAnf, uh, here you uh, need to change the WebAnf eacache.xml and WebAnf classes eacache hibernate.xml for, uh, for cache replication using ActiveMQ. So if you go here, Jasper Server will provide you. Uh, this file is also already provided by Jasper Server, and it's saying here that if you want no clustering, so this is the default option. So you you in your uh, current implementation you have this uncommented. So what you need to do is you need to comment comment out this no clustering part and uncomment out the clustering part using GMS. So uh, all you need to do here actually is just to have this provider URL to point to your uh, to your ActiveMQ server uh, address. So here I'm doing it. Uh, I'm, this is a uh, uh, environment variable where I'm having my uh, uh, my uh, ActiveMQ address. But you can actually you can just go ahead and do localhost something here. To, you just need to make sure that it's pointing to your ActiveMQ server using TCP port. So you need to do this in the different parts of the EA cache configuration. So in the cache loader factory as well, you need to give them provider factory. So this will take care of creating those queues that you are going to be responsible to synchronize the cache inside Jasper server. So the same thing actually for eacache.xml, gonna do it in the WebAnf classes, eacache hibernate.xml. So we need to comment out the no clustering part and, and comment the GMS part. Again, the provider URL, change the provider URL to your GMS, uh, GMS server. in the cache loader factory and cache loader factory here, as you see, the provider URL and all the parts where you have uh, provider URL property. So this, I, yeah, I guess this is done for the a cache replication. So the web.xml will actually have uh, the, uh, the partial session replication. 
So as you see here, for session replication, you need to uncomment this uh, filter, cluster filter, and comment out the definition of the of the filter with this class that Jasper Server provide tolerance session filter. So doing those simple customization, now you should be set up for uh, to to have uh, to have a working cluster of Jasper Server. Uh, inside, sorry, inside the Tomcat, you need also to change. Uh, well, this uh, city environment variable you need to have. Uh, this is the important thing: standard session activity check to true to do it for Tomcat. The uh, Java environment variable. This one is if if only just you want to put your address, uh, the active MQ address, as an environment variable, or if not, you can just hard code it in the configuration files that we've seen before. And the conf of the server, the Tomcat. So you need to also to uncomment this to disable session persistence across Tomcat restart. So you need to specify this uh, Delta manager of Tomcat to, to work as a cluster. This is all Tomcat related uh, configuration to have a, a cluster in Tomcat because the partial session replication is actually something that will be uh, to be more of, a of the application server responsibility. So here, this is a custom thing that I've just added that you can also do is to add those uh, those login uh, to to show some uh, to show login for Apache cluster classes. So I'm just add this handler with the prefix cluster, and if you go to the end in the login dot properties, I'm just declaring those classes. Cluster Arg Apache with a different level, as you see here. So this uh, doing in the demo, we're going to see this uh, showing us some interesting info uh, and errors. If you ever encountered some errors, you can see them in the clustering logs. But server.xml, you're gonna have this uh, cluster. You need to enable this cluster part of Tomcat. So <clears throat> basically, you can keep the default options. Uh, Tomcat use always use this address uh, as a starting point to create the cluster and broadcast its IP address through different ports, starting from 45564. And uh, you can also go through uh, all those other properties if you wanna if you wanna adjust or customize uh, how Tomcat clustering works. Is actually I, I've put the links to uh, in the slides. I can show you this now. All of those Tomcat configuration can be found on Tomcat clustering documentation. So you go here. You can you can explain you all the properties and all what they do if you want to uh, to go a little to dive more deeper. The Tomcat clustering will. Here we'll show you all. This is the default, as you see, default configuration. You can uh, you can have more information about that inside the documentation of Apache. Uh, okay, so going so yeah, so those are the Tomcat customization are mainly for the partial session replications of the Jasper server. There is just those two customization that they will you will need to put in place. Uh, okay, so I think I want through the different changes. Let's let's do some testing. Uh, okay, so first I need to I need to start up my ActiveMQ server and my Apache load balancer. I think I have them here. So the ActiveMQ is you need just to install it from. Uh, ActiveMQ website. So this is the ActiveMQ. So you need to download it. Once you download it, you're gonna have it like here. Uh, no, sorry, this is the Apache ActiveMQ. So just going to the bean folder and you can start the server. Okay, so ActiveMQ, if my memory serves me, will be start. 
Here we go. So I'm starting up my ActiveMQ server. As you hear in the logs, it's starting uh, the TCP port in 61616. This is the default port. And at the same time, it's uh, launching my the admin console in 8161 via the HTTP port. So if I go to if I go to my local host. 8161. Here we go. So I have my ActiveMQ up and running. So I'm going to leave this uh, and start up a new, uh, start up my, uh, my Apache load balancer. So my Apache load balancer, also the Tomcat, the, I'm sorry, the Apache load balancer, you can just download it from the Apache website. And then once you have that zip file, you can just go in the bin. There we go. And you can start it. I think I already started it in my machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and do restart. OK, looks good. Uh, let me check if it's up and running. So it's, I created my virtual host, remember, in the 80. Uh, what did I show you this? In the HTTPD conf, so my virtual host in the port 880. So I'm just going to try it out here. Here we go. All right. So my load balancer is up and running. My ActiveMQ as well. You just go back here so we can, we can follow. So I have my load balancer up and running with a sticky session. I have my ActiveMQ also up and running and my Jasper server customization pointing to ActiveMQ in the EA cache, EA cache co and configuration that we've seen. So I've set, I've set up my Tomcat also to use uh, partial session replication. So all I need to do now is to start my servers and see how it's gonna behave. So I have my two my two Apache are instance one, instance two. Now you see I have my two servers. So servers are running in, if I go to my HTTPD conf again, my two servers are running in 8080 and 8088, all right? So let's go start, let's first clear up the logs. So just to have some clear stuff here. So Catalina, I'm going to clear up the clustering log as well. So we can see, we can see the servers logs in real time. I'm going to go do the same for my second instance of Tomcat. <clears throat> okay. Have my cluster. Yeah, I will also need the access log so I can see, uh, I can check uh, if the requests are going to the same node or not. Uh, logs and access. Okay, here we go. So here I have my instance one, as you see here, the cluster logs and the local host. Uh, not this one, access logs for instance one, and I have the Catalina for instance two, the access for instance two, and the cluster for instance two. Great, so let's start with instance one. So I'm just gonna go and go and start uh, instance one, start up my Tomcat, here we go. So it started up. So you see here is some cluster is about to start. So it's starting to waiting and uh, start to broadcasting uh, its IP address. And we're going to see the second uh, instance of Tomcat is going to going to detect that there is another 
Tomcat in the cluster, so we, they were going to, to form a cluster. I'm going to see that in the logs. So let's do something like this. So Catalina logs here in actions. Okay, so I don't need to wait for this Tomcat to, to start to start the other one. So I can just go ahead and start the other one, but just to show you so we can follow the logs. If I go to just point myself to the other instance, instance two. Let's see if we have something coming out from the clustering logs. Good. So as you see here, sitting cluster multicast. Uh, so it looks like it looks good. So it's uh, the clustering is working for now. I don't have no logs for the access. Gonna you know, wait for the our server to start start to start up. There's some uh, log for G errors. It's okay. Hey, better while we're waiting, uh, why don't we answer one of the questions we got in on the uh, Q and A? Uh, what so what's sure. the impact? I think you kind of answered this already as you went on. This was an early on question from Reg. Uh, what's the impact of not having the JMS provider? Well, you can't have a cluster without a JMS provider because you can't you <clears throat> the the your your you. Let me go back to the architecture. So your users here, once they're gonna reach the Tomcat server and they're gonna do some uh, changes in the repository, this won't be visible to to the other users that they go to the other instances. So it won't right. it won't the make cache, sense. Cache won't, the cache won't be able to replicate across the yeah. two instances. That's right. So exactly. Good. Um, is there a chance of two sessions, one on each Tomcat server, getting the same J session ID? Uh, could you repeat that, please? Is there a chance of two sessions uh -huh. getting the same J session ID? No, uh, this is this is a this is an application server responsibility. So Tomcat will act, should actually never create the same G session ID for the same user. Right, right. All right, are your session are your servers uh, set up started up yet? Before we get into the rest of the questions. Yeah, hope so. Okay, so looks like it started up. So that's good. You can see here. Tom about cluster is about to start. So let's see the clustering change. All right. So register manager. So you see here it was registered at Jasper server 7.5. So everything looks good. So let's go here and start the other one. And then we're going to see some exchange about the session forming the cluster in this instance too. Here we go. Okay, so I have my startup here and I have my the other one, the AT88 in here. All right. Okay, I have some activities here. Okay, so let's start it up. Okay. Is there any other questions maybe uh, waiting for Tom? There are, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
So another question uh, from Reg, Do, does ActiveMQ and Apache Load Balancer have to run on the same server as with Tomcat or can they be on different servers? Okay, I'm going to answer this question. Uh, just once I want to show you this. So as you see here in the, in the other instance that was already set up, we can see here that uh, there's a member added so uh, this the 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 Tomcat the eighty eighty uh, Tomcat was aware that another instance was uh, uh, was started up with the same configuration what we did in the clustering, so they formed the cluster here as you see, so they called a membership and now we can we are we are sure that there is a cl Tomcat cluster with session replicated uh, and we inside. see the same one on the other window as well right better I saw it a little further up on the other window screen too. Yeah, oh, let me see that up. About halfway up. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yep. So that looks good. We have some exchange uh, inside both the nodes. Okay, so to answer the questions, no. The uh, the Apache, uh, the, the load balancer, no, it, it should not be on the same uh, server, of course. You can have, uh, the, the idea actually to have a cluster is to have uh, each server in its own. Uh, it's it's just a report server in its own server. So this way you will you can actually uh, if 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 you have some some problems on that server like some uh, uh, technical issues, uh, hardware issues. So you still have uh, you still have uh, another node, the independent node. So it just the only difference is about networking, right? So if you have another server in another network or in another uh, machine, so all you need to to do is to make sure that the, the it can access the active MQ, it can access the repository database, and there is a, there is a flow between the load balancer and the other instances. Yeah, and I'll I'll add on to that too. I, I would say you definitely you most definitely it's very probably not common at all to have the load balancer on the same server as Tomcat. Most people want to do that for an architecture standpoint to set up certain requirements, firewalls, permissions, you know, access and that sort of stuff. So generally you'll have a load balancer sitting on front. Uh, I think uh, Batter's uh, image kind of showed that. And then, um, and then, and then that will funnel down to the separate servers. So, so yeah, you, you definitely, um, you usually want to do that. Just like that picture of the, right there, the load balancer is separate, right? And and then Tomcat and and JRS is on on their own machines. Exactly. All right. So, do we have more to show then on your uh, Let's on see. your demo? Uh, okay, we we'll close. We still have more questions, more. Mike. Yeah, we have a couple more questions. Sure. Um, so Eric asked, uh, what about using RMI instead of ActiveMQ? Uh, I'm not sure. Do you have any experience with that batter using RMI? Uh, not really. It's still uh, the best way is to use JMS provider as it's commonly used, and uh, you have. Uh, you have uh, GMS, which is recent uh, technology based on uh, instead of RMI. So I don't think you think you, you're going to prevent some issues later on using RMI because this is something that's not used anymore. Uh, but I, technically, if you implement it, I think I think it it should work. But I don't know. I can say if you're gonna hit some pitfalls. Or some I I issues. think I yeah. think we even document how to set up the RMI if you wanted we to do, do. RMI. I know it. I know it was in the old documents. I haven't looked at the later versions, but um, I don't think it would be a problem, Eric. You 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 should be able to do that. Um, it just, it's just not, you know, this is, as Batter said, this is uh, active MQ is the much more common uh, use case that we see um, it, with our clients. If you have further questions or concerns about getting RMI, um, you know, you can definitely reach out to us, uh, send us an email, or if you're a current customer, you can, you know, talk to your customer success manager and we can always discuss that if you need that assistance, but yeah, it's, it's an option. I just, um, yeah, and you're right. It, it, it may be simpler to use, especially if you have experience with it, but we've just done all our stuff using active MQ in the last uh, few years. Yeah, definitely. So unless you have like a specific reason and uh, actual reason to use Erimai, it's the better is to use the active MQ. Yeah. And then, uh, we do have another question, um, 
Tony's asked, uh, could, could we not cluster Tomcat? What's the impact if Tomcat is not clustered? That's a good question. Uh, so if we don't have this, uh, if we don't have the partial session replication, the only uh, impact it's gonna have is uh, if this node failed, so your, your, load, your load balancer will redirect your, that, that user that was working here to this node, right? So what this user will have to log in again, all right? So we'll have to log in again uh, in order to continue his work and he will lose his, his work state if he, if he, if he were doing, uh, checking some folders, doing something in the repository. So he will not, he will, he will lose that. And that's the only impact. So he's going to log in again be invited to log in again. So he will be aware that something was, was going on with since, uh, that something went wrong, and if he was in the repository, uh, he will uh, he will not uh, he will lose all his work in the repository. Right. If the if the partial session replication was on, and the same thing happened, so this user will the load balancer will direct the user to this node uh, without without inviting him to log in again. So we will just we get, we're gonna have this we're gonna do this test. Uh, and we're going to see the way with, with some loading time, and then he will just stay on. If, if he was on the repository, he will stay working on the repository, like nothing happened. But only if he were on, if he were doing ad hoc design, scheduling report or running report, and then he will be redirected to the home page of this node and lose his work because this is only partial session replication and we don't uh, we don't we don't duplicate the we don't uh, we don't replicate the the ad hoc work and domain work and uh, report uh, data on the session. Yeah, and the common question I get is why not? And you know the big thing is you have to remember the overhead uh, that goes in in place with session replication. And we don't know how big your reports are and your, how much data you're pulling down. And if we try to replicate all of your report data, if you're running a report or all the domain data, as Batter mentioned, that ends up being a very uh, costly uh, transaction and it slows down everything. So we've made the conscious decision to only do partial session replication. Uh, within within a clustered environment in JasperSoft. And the other thing that I like to stress and point out is that if you're using a strictly visualize.js based approach to JasperSoft with our, our visualized framework, even partial session replication doesn't, doesn't tend to make a lot of sense because really the only thing you're getting is that user session. And with visualize, you can trap and catch any errors. So if a server goes down and a user was logged in, and you try to make a visualize call, you can actually write that code so that it catches the fact that that session is gone and then just send a re-login, a new login request under the cover so the user has no idea that even happened and boom, they're on the second server now resuming you know, activities without really knowing. So in a visualized world, I think your requirements kind of change a little bit and you just have to remember there's a con there, right? There's a, a negative to doing that session replication because there's overhead. Every time a user logs in, it has to replicate that session over multiple servers. So um, you have to decide if that makes sense, uh, if that's worth the, 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 you know, that overhead in your environment. Exactly, Mike. That's uh, exactly that's for the clarification. And this, if you go to the Jasper Server Community Ultimate Guide uh, and go to uh, Design in a Cluster, so you're going to see those parts that are not replicated. They're not replicated in in Tomcat. So everything in every states ad hoc ad hoc states fields and data dashboards, the Jasper print object when you run your report, the domain designer. If you are using all up so all up viewer states and administration dialogues so those are not part of the session they're not part they're, they can't be replicated on the session so you will not be able to see uh, you, you will lose your work uh, the user will lose its work if uh, if it was if there was a failover uh, while doing those activities sure this is the impact do, do we have do we have more with your demo? Because there's another question, and I want to be cognizant of time. We're running quite over today. Um, is there okay, so uh, my, the servers both started up, so everything looks nice as you see here. So there is a membership uh, between the Tomcat. So the login, we can see from the log that everything is is good. So request session state here. So no session state sent because we still didn't access the server. So let's go ahead. Uh, okay, 
everything looks good. So, so we will leave the question at the end, or should yeah, I just yeah, go keep going with the demo so we can finish through the demo, please. Yep. All right. So let's go now into localhost. So if I go to localhost Jasper Server Pro, as you see here, I did I did the AT port. So I'm reaching the load balancer. So the load balancer will will should direct me to some of this either this node instance one or this node instance two. All right. And remember, everyone, batter's running both instances on one uh, Windows box, so it's going to be slower. Uh, slower on his uh, single box here than what you would normally have because they'd be on their own boxes normally. So those are my two servers. So as you see here, there's some activities here. So my load balancer choose, uh, let's see what's in what instance choose. So we choose this instance, instance one. So we have this activity here, nothing going on here. So if I opened a new Firefox, for example, And it's going to do like this up. I'm going to go now reach a uh, from Firefox and I'm going to see. Here we go. So I have activities in other. Uh, it looks like I have some error here. OK. So looks good. Okay, so I have my instance two running in Firefox and I have my instance one running in my browser, in my Chrome here. So I'm just gonna go here and do test. Uh, yeah, I don't have a password. So I'm gonna connect in this instance one. And as you see, I will be, I will stay on that same, same, uh, same server. And if I go here and do this too, in Firefox, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be in the other instance. So all further requests, as you see in the repository, they will stay on that same server thanks to the sticky session. Uh, okay, so here, uh, what I'm going to do is let's test the, uh, okay. Okay, so I open this ad hoc designer here and I'm open, let's do this repository here. So here I am on the, on, uh, let me check again. I am on the instance two, right? Yes, I'm on the instance two. So I'm gonna do is gonna to kill the instance two, which is this one. Oh. Okay, let me check again. Yeah, so this is the instance two. So I'm going to kill this instance two and I am now in the repository, right? So uh, once I'm gonna kill this instance, I'm gonna keep working on the repository. So I should be work, keep working because the session is uh, both nodes are aware, uh, the Tomcat nodes and the, uh, the, the, bro the Tomcat here in the, uh, uh, in the Chrome is aware of uh, test two in this, uh, in, in the other instances, instance. So I need to keep working, but if I were doing ad hoc or something, I will, I will be redacted to homepage because the session doesn't have the state of ad hoc. So uh, this is still the same user, but there is no state of his work. So we will be redacted to the homepage. So let's do this. Uh, I'm going to up, just to make sure again. Okay, so this is my, Browser, I'm gonna kill it. So now I'm running only one instance. I have a server failing. So as you see here, there is some uh, member disappearing, disappeared. So he is, uh, is aware that the other 
Tomcat is aware that there was no, uh, that the other Tomcat node uh, disappeared from the cluster. So he has its session. So the load balancer now, once I'm gonna do a click, is going to redirect me to the other server and I'm gonna, should keep working. So I'm gonna do like this. So we see there's some loading time. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna keep working on this. So you see it's the other instance now is took up the, uh, the work and as you see, um, I'm keep I'm I'm working on that instance on the bro on Firefox browser without noticing anything. If I was doing ad hoc views, this would be another story. So I'm going to go to uh, I'm going to be uh, redirected to the home page. All right, Batter, are we almost done? Okay. We are, we yeah. are over on time, so um, yeah. I think that was pretty good. Uh, pretty good uh, display there of how the the clusters know of each other. Um, was there anything else you wanted to show or we can we wrap it up? No, no. Yeah, we can wrap it up. Okay, great. Um, that's awesome. Um, uh, so there was one more question. Eric asked, uh, regarding reports importation, we shut down Tomcat when importing new reports in a single instance as the documentation recommends, but what about a cluster? Do we have to shut down both instances? So uh, that that's a precautionary step that honestly, Eric, uh, for importing, I almost never... Uh, bother to do, which is shutting down your your instance. Um, if you're importing a whole bunch of reports, there, it's more about just if there's a conflict and whatnot. Bottom line is anything you import in one, you know, in your repository, your Tomcats or both your Tomcat servers are pointing to the same Postgres database as you see here in this image. So once that data is imported, the other instances will have access to it just the same. So if you're using the UI to import then you'll see it in the other one eventually, um, you know, as well, once it's in there. If you're using the command line to import, uh, which it sounds like that's what you're doing, you don't have to shut down multiple servers. Um, it's more about really the exporting is where you have to be concerned because if you're exporting stuff and people are making changes, you can get some sort of conflicts there and that's where it gets a little bit more of a concern. Um, but because the data you're dealing with on imports and exports is in that database, the Tomcat repository, the, sorry, the Jaspersoft, repository, it, it, it uh, the Tomcat instances don't really matter as far as the clusters go. So the cache might be out of whack for a little bit, but it will refresh itself eventually and, and ActiveMQ will replicate that data across, but uh, you should be good, um, you know, either way to just, you're just mostly interacting with that database when you do the import and export, so. Um, and Eric, if you have, yeah, I see your, your follow-up there. Feel free to reach out if you have issues. I don't know if you're, if you're a current customer and you have the Upshift program, feel free to reach out and uh, talk to your CSM and we can get, we can get help uh, with you there. Otherwise, uh, shoot an email to drjaspersoft at, um, at tipco.com and we can try to answer you there. Um, but in the interest of time, we're gonna go ahead and uh, wrap up this session. Um, Batter, if you wanna stop sharing, uh, that sure. would be good. And um, boop, boop, boop. I yeah. opened the wrong thing. I think we want a little bit of our time here. Sorry. Uh, just a little bit. So that's all right. That's all right. Thanks. Oh, geez. I'm nice and blurry. There I am. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to stress one more time next month's session, the core session that Kamal and Batter will be running. Uh, that's May 13th, uh, same time, um, same, same way to register. The link will be updated probably later today or tomorrow to register. And just on a uh, personal note, this is my uh, final Dr. Jaspersoft session that I'll be hosting. I'm moving on from TIPCO after seven wonderful years. So I just want to thank everyone for your support over the, uh, the last year and a half we've been doing this. Uh, Kamal and Batter will be taking over on a sort of a rotating basis. And, uh, and uh, you're in great hands, of course. Uh, they're both phenomenal at what they do. And uh, so that's pretty much it. That's all I have. Uh, thanks. I don't think you're gonna be able to fill your shoes, Mike, but you're gonna do our best. <laughs> uh, you'll be you'll be just fine. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much. Thanks for those of you that stuck it Th out. Thank you, Dr. Jasper. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Jasper. <laughs> that's them all. Thank you, them all. And uh, no, it, yeah, I agree with Butter. I agree with Butter. It's gonna be tough, but uh, no, it was fun. It was fun. Thank you. Yeah. So, and and apologies if you send an email to Dr. Jasper at tipco.com 
Uh, it may get a little bit lost in the shuffle. I'll try to address the ones that I have right now. There's been a couple out there. Uh, if you send me one after tomorrow, that's when we're going to try to transition it over to these gentlemen. Uh, so just if there's no response, feel free to send another another email next week and uh, and we'll get you guys a response. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, you can always post in the YouTube uh, comments, but we don't tend to monitor that as much. So please send an email to drjaspersoft at tipgo.com. And uh, we will, as soon as the session's over, we will post on our community site um, the link to the slides that Batter presented. There's a resources slide he didn't get to that shows a lot of links to all of the clustering stuff you need to know. So that'll all be up there uh, probably in the next hour or so uh, on our community site. Just search for Jaspersoft or search for Dr. Jaspersoft and it usually comes up right away on your search results. So. Thanks again, everyone, and have a great rest of your week. And we'll see you all, uh, well, Kamal and Batter, we'll see you all next month. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.